Once we get a fairly good caries removal, what I will then typically do is I'll place the caries indicator, and you can see that they'll, it's blue and why I would be a little bit concerned, especially going subgingively on the tissue. So the blue definitely makes an excellent contrast. And what we'll do is we'll um, remove caries and create a clean border. Now this area is very interesting, and I especially highlight this area right in the pulp. Now, what's interesting and what we're seeing now, and it's a bit of a radical departure from current thought, is what do we do with this area that's denoted blue? Is it carious to structure? Is it simply an, a false positive, if you will? Or quite frankly, does it matter? We're seeing several approaches now, and one of them is quite popularized, uh, particularly by my uh, friend and mentor, Dr. David Clark and Dr. John Cademy, who is an endodontist, and, and both of them are some of the greatest minds in dentistry. And what they're saying is, you know, there was a technique that came out years ago by a pediatric dentist uh, named Noma Hall. And what she had done was she had placed stainless steel crowns on top of carious tooth structure. She had filled them with glass ionomer cement and, and since she retired in 2006, I believe, they had shown about a 97% success rate provided certain criteria were met. What Dr. Clark and Dr. Academy are starting to advocate is, well, you know, dentin acts, even affected dentin can act a bit as an insulator. So the suggestion here is to clean the caries so that you have a very clean margin on the periphery. And you can see in this photograph, and it is through the microscope, of a clean periphery and that deeper area whether it's a false positive or if it's even carries we're not particularly concerned now the other reason why we're not particularly concerned with that is that there's also advent of some technologies such as uh, more bioactive restorations and I have been using um, some of them this is one I, I quite like and this is uh, Activa from Pulp Dent and what we're doing is it's, it's a um, modified, if you will, resin modified glass ionomer. And we're seeing great success, or at least I am clinically, and, and a lot of my compatriots are, by placing a layer of it after the area is cleaned, and then placing a, a liner or even a full restoration of the um, bioactive material over the deepest recesses of the tooth. Now, in this case, because we're trying to get the patient to a partial denture, we decided to use a bit of a composite, a stronger resin composite. If we did not, we could have also filled this tooth up with the bioactive material. So we place this as a liner, keeping clear of our enamel margins. Um, and one tip I just wanted to put out there, because we're discussing aesthetics, is that often the composites we use in the cervical area tend to be a bit translucent for the cervical region, because we know that the enamel is quite thin, so a lot of the color, the saturated color, the chroma, relies very heavily on a very thin layer of enamel and quite prominent dentinal color. So using an enamel shade in the cervical region can make the restoration look quite gray. My suggestion would be twofold. One would be to consider the use of a liquid opaquer and also to use a body or dentin shade in the cervical region. So this is a placement of an opaquer under the filter through the scope. Um, this is a shot of it being cured uh, with a glycerin. And this is the immediate post-operative view of that restoration. Uh, again, this patient was asymptomatic but the caries were quite deep. And here's a photograph of the restoration over three months in use, and thus far the patient has been completely asymptomatic, even though the caries were both deep and his hygiene leaves little to be desired.